uh, what we saw on the weekend. It was an incredible event and everyone played their part, the media, the articles that you guys put out, the videos that you put out, I watch and see everything. Congratulations to you, the promoters who worked with each other as well, the broadcasters, the fans. Record numbers attended Wembley Stadium, nearly 100,000 were in attendance. Thank you so much for coming and to most importantly, the fighters for putting it all on the line. Uh, one fight that I do want to single out, you guys would have seen it at the end of the fight he had against Anthony Kakache. Josh Warrington put his gloves down on the canvas and I just want to congratulate Josh on, if this is his final fight, what an incredible career Josh has had. Um, I've been lucky enough to have gone to a few Josh Warrington fights and I've always said, I think I've said this to Eddie so many times, I think the best fans that I've ever seen when it comes to boxing, the noise that those Leeds fans make are incredible. And if we don't see it again, I will be disappointed, Eddie, but hopefully Josh is happy with the career he's had because I think it's been an absolutely outstanding career. So if we can, just a round of applause for Josh Warrington <laughs> on what is an incredible career. All right, so matters at hand. I sat down with Turkey, I think it was post AJ Ngannou press conference, and we had the whole lineup of what was to come um, in Riyadh season for the coming months. And I asked him one question, I said, of all the fights that we've got coming, which one are you most excited about? You guys might have seen the interview. 54 million views, just saying. And he said that he's most excited about Artur Baturbia versus Dimitri Bivol, and I share that excitement as well. We are talking two of the best light heavyweights, not just of this era, which is obvious, because they're both unbeaten and both unified. I think we're talking about two of the best light heavyweights of all time. And whoever wins this fight come October 12th is in a great argument to be called the greatest light heavyweight we've ever seen. You have Dimitri Bivol, the current WBA and IBO champion, unbeaten, some incredible wins, most notably going to Las Vegas and beating Canelo Alvarez. Following that performance, he completely schooled Zerdo Ramirez, who's now a cruiserweight world champion. And then we have Artur Baturbiev, who's just an absolute record machine. 20 fights, 20 wins, 20 knockouts. You can see the gold in front of him, the WBC belt the IBF belt and the WBO belt. Someone is gonna go home with all this gold plus the Ring magazine October 12th and that's why I think it's not just the best fight we've seen this year and it will be. I think it's one of the best fights we're ever gonna see. I really do think this is gonna be something very, very special and it is going to take place as part of Riyadh season and you know by now that Riyadh season only delivers stuff that are very, very special. We are gonna hear from all the fighters. I have been promised that Jai Pattaya will be here very soon. His flight landed late, but we have got him an emergency vehicle. He will be here to obviously go back and forth with Jack Massey. Before we do that, I do want to quickly hear from a couple of men on the top table. Spencer Brown, I'm going to start with you. Me and you have spoken so much about what Riyadh season has done to change the sport of boxing. Before we focus on this event, Spencer, just a quick look back to what we all experienced on Saturday. Wembley Stadium looked insane. It looked incredible. That has been Riyadh season, and obviously we can expect something similar October 12th. Yeah, a lot of people have said to me that they thought Saturday was possibly the best boxing event ever been put on, the world's ever seen. I can't think of too many more that, that have. It was incredible. Um, the result was uh, maybe unexpected for a lot of people, but just the whole thing was incredible. The stars were there, the, just... Just the whole build up to it. Wembley way, you walked up there, was like um, like England was playing. It was incredible. So I've got to say well done to Riyadh season, Turkey, Ella Sheikh, all his team, Sella, you know, GEA, everybody. I mean, they left nothing to fruition with that show. Everything was bang on. It's Unbelievable. Point. In terms of expectance for this one, again, I've given it the big sell. It didn't need a sell because it is incredible. But Dimitri Bivol versus Artur Baturbiev for all the marbles is just sensational. It just keeps rolling on. It's show after show. I mean, this fight is, I think, if you're a boxing fan, is a must-see fight. It, you know, we had the injury, first of all. It's all come back round. It's, we're now here with it. I just can't wait. But, you know, there's a few milestones here today. We've got the two, first time two ladies are fighting in Riyadh. Um, I'm looking forward to that one. And we've, we've got, a, you know, we've got another guy here, uh, a Saudi Arabian's making his debut in Mohammed. And, um, you know, he's, he's took a long time to get there. But we now have, we've now got Saudi Arabian fighters coming through. 
anchor match for match on the world stage. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, he's a great kid. Uh, so, you know, there's great fights. I, I think everybody's going to love this and enjoy it. Yeah. So buy, buy it on pay-per-view. Certainly do. It's going to be an incredible fight card. Eddie Hearn, I'll turn to you. Um, Dimitri Bivol is your guy, right? Dimitri Bivol is, I think, one of the pound-for-pound -pound best fighters in the world. Before you talk about Bivol, again, your reaction to Saturday, right? I mean, AJ was your guy as well, Eddie. Your reaction to Saturday and then to Dimitri Bivol. Yeah, I mean, firstly, I think, you know, echo what Spencer said, just one of the greatest, not just fight nights, but sporting events I've ever seen. Obviously, uh, didn't go our way, but at the same time, left Wembley a little bit with a tail between the legs, but particularly proud of the shot in the arm that British boxing needed. And that shot in the arm was provided in the most unexpected way by Riyadh season, which with this event, Bivol Betabir, which we'll come on to, will mark one year, really, since big time boxing began in Riyadh season. And what has happened is incredible. And you know, I will take a time just to say, I, I still can't understand the, the negativity and moans from some people. You know, Riyadh season is a project that takes place in Riyadh. What we saw last week was a culmination of a passion for sport that His Excellency has. A man that listened to the fight fans and went above and beyond to deliver for British fight fans who said they wanted to experience a Riyadh season event. No one could have put on an event like that. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying it, but that includes me, that includes Frank, and we all acknowledge that. And what we have seen over the last year has changed the face of the sport. It's benefited everybody, everybody in this room, particularly and most importantly, the fighters who have had the fights that can define their legacy, have had the fights that can financially secure their future. And as promoters, we're all starting to see what working together can do for the sport. Last week was incredible, and Los Angeles was incredible. And this is all coming from a passion that His Excellency has for the sport. And we are 100% behind it and committed and I've certainly never had so much fun in the sport. I've never enjoyed the fight nights as much. I've never seen so many fighters taking opportunities and taking chances. So long may that continue. This fight, for me, unquestionably, the best fight in boxing. And it is a fight that any fight fan, hardcore or casual, will acknowledge as two generational greats, the best two light heavyweights in the world fighting for every single belt. I hope that casual fans around the world can hear and listen and understand the importance of this fight because this is a fight that, for me, can only be an all-time classic. The guy to my left, our charge, Dimitri Bivol, just an incredible fighter, a master technician, you know, someone that went into the lion's den of the T-Mobile Arena on Cinco de Mayo and, I'm sorry, schooled Canelo Alvarez that night and beat him with ease. This time, it's a bigger challenge physically. One of the all-time great light heavyweights in Arthur Better Be Ever, Machine. And you have two immovable forces meeting for the undisputed light heavyweight world championship. And I think what a fantastic way to kick off Riyadh season with the very best fight in the sport. And the undercard, every single fight on the card can headline its own show, as per usual. So my advice to everybody is let's keep this momentum. Let's keep staging big fights in Britain, in America, you know, we've got Todd and Top Rank here as well, and let's keep riding this wild ride of Riyadh season, which is changing the face of the sport and making boxing great again. Thank you, Eddie. I was going to say phones on silent, then I realised it was Baturbia's phone, so you can do what you want, uh, Artur. Um, Frank, um, Riyadh season's been insane, right? Incredible. Eddie mentioned it would be a year once this fight rolls around. Jai, great to have you in the building as well, Jai. It would be a year since uh, the first Riyadh season event, Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. How would you sum up the 12 months so far in Riyadh season? Game changer, which we said last, you know, last year. This, this would be and has been the game changer for British boxing, for the world boxing scene. You know, Riyadh season now means the best fights in the world. That's what it is. If you say Riyadh season, they're the best fights in the world. That's what's been delivered. The fights that the fans want to see, and I just want to add, before going on about it, I just want to add, add to what Eddie said. Why is there criticism here? 
I don't get this whatsoever. You know, people, you know, a small minority of people complaining about a national anthem plan being played. The clue is in the name. It's called Riyadh Season. That's why we were at Wembley, because they enabled that huge event to be made. As Eddie said, as I know, I'm sure Todd will agree, these type of events would not be able to made, be made without that financial input. And it's because of the, 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 the love of boxing from His Excellency and the fact that he's chairman of Riyadh Season has made that happen. And the fans there, were they disappointed? Did you hear anybody moaning about the event? The only pe people you hear moaning about it are people who are not included who had, or maybe had a meeting cancelled when they couldn't, when, when they were blown out because of, because of the, uh, it, they, they, it put their nose out of joint. And, uh, and there's one person in particular, which I'm going to deal with afterwards, I will speak to some of the, some of the uh, guys and tell you how I feel about what's been said today. But it's ridiculous. This has been brilliant for boxing. You know, I'm looking at this, there's Colin, the doing of the boxing over there, Colin Hart, and, you know, sitting, sit, sitting there next to him is Jeff, Jeff Powell. You, they've, done, they've been all around the world. They've seen big fights. They've been to Kinshasa. They've been to, they've been to the Fruer in Manila. They've done all these. You know, we've got Todd here. He's, you know, his, his stepfather. All these big fights he was involved with around the world. People complaining where fights are taking place. Big fights took place in Africa, in the Philippines, all over Jamaica, big, big fights. What's the moan about all this? I don't get it one little bit. The fights are happening. The fans are getting what they want, which are the big fights, great fights. And here we are today. We're involved with a show that's got another great fight, the Game of Thrones. These four belts on the line, two undefeated fighters, 43 fights between them, undefeated. You know, one of them has the most perfect record, 20 fights, 20 knockouts. This is something special, and it's happening because of Rio season. You guys, how long have you been trying to get it on this fight? Everybody's been trying to make this fight happen. It's not happened. And, and, now, it's, and now, because of Rio season, it is. And you know what? These guys are getting well paid for it as well. Big money, big money. In the most dangerous of all sports, getting paid great purses. What is there to complain about? The fans are get, doing well. The boxers are doing well. And yes, by the way, we're doing well. We work hard. That's what we're doing. We're professionals. We're not amateurs. And I certainly am not the apologist for anything that's happened. It's been brilliant for British boxing, and it's certainly been brilliant for the boxers that I'm in, I've been involved with. 5v5, how would that have happened? Would we have been talking about that? No, we wouldn't have been talking about that. That happened because of Riyadh season. And it's just disgraceful that, that people are picking at stuff after such a sensational night on Saturday, a sensational night, that all the fans love. People saying, oh, there was a couple of empty seats called sight lines, you know, canopy sight lines. But what would they know about boxing? What would they know about setting up an event? And as I say, here we are again. And you know what's on this card? An historical moment for Saudi Arabia, for Riyadh, a women's world title fight. That's what we got on the card. Is that progress? Is that great? Is that great for women's boxing? You pleased about that, Sky? Very. Raven? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, and you're getting well paid? Yep. <laughs> That's what it's about. I don't get all this nonsense, all this negativity. This is brilliant. I, I, I'm 72 years of age. I can't, believe, I can't believe some of the people and some of the things that are being said. And if you feel so bad about it, don't attend. Don't come. Don't attend. But you know what? The boxing fans will be there because they love it. They love what they're seeing and what they're getting. And this show is a great, great show. And I don't want to, and I am deviating from the main fight, but this main fight, I'm a neutral in this, but I've got to tell you something, I can't wait to see it. This is a great fight. This is what boxing's about. The best fighting the best. And we'll find out, is he the best or is he the best? We're going to find out. We certainly will. Frank, very much. I'm, I'm conscious of getting to the fight as quickly, um, but I do want a quick, a quick word from Todd DeBuff from Top Rank. Todd, you've flown in from the States. You hear Frank's speech there, and it is impassioned, isn't it? Because there are some that are negative towards Riyadh season, but it's been fantastic for fight fans and for the fighters. Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think it's kind of interesting. I, I, come, I landed yesterday, and I call it the ripple. You know, the buzz. And when you have a great event, and it 
kind of seeps over to Monday, Tuesday, and we're talking about it today, that's a great event. And most people are used to Bob or Don or Eddie or Frank, us throwing shade on one another. Truthfully, I am so proud to be in this business because of what these guys did on Saturday night. What they did, what Sella did, what the Riyadh season did, it helped all of us enormously bring back the faith in fans, in sports fans. I'm not hating, I'm actually upset I wasn't there. They want to have the big events. They want Formula One, they want wrestling, they want boxing, and they're making a lot of, ever, a lot of sports and a lot of us content holders make bridging the gap to make this stuff happen. So we should all be appreciative. But really, honestly, real kudos to everybody involved on, sa on Saturday, because there's no hate in here, just love. Well done, Todd, thank you very much. Final word to Ben before we hear from the fighters. Ben, shalom, you've got a few charges on this fight card, some really good fighters as well. You must be excited about your stable at the moment and what your stable can do for Riyadh season. Yeah, it is, it is incredible. Saturday night was the best boxing event I've ever attended. But I have to thank His Excellency. There's a lot of politics in the game. I think people see the promoters back and forth, but he doesn't let it get in the way. He doesn't let it get in the way of the fights he wants to make, the fighters he wants to see, the stars he wants on the, on the show. This is the best fight in boxing. But then the undercard is ridiculous as well. And main events and superstars, and for me, a heavyweight fight that broke records this year. It's incredible. Thank you to His Excellency. Thank you to Spencer Brown. I'm looking forward to another historic event. Thank you very much, Ben. All right, let's hear it from the fighters. I want to start with a fighter from Saudi Arabia making his debut from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia as well. So he's going to have a lot of a home crowd. Mohammed Alakal. Mohammed, well done. Congratulations, your debut you. coming up. You must be super excited. Yes, I'm very excited. Um, look, very looking forward to it. Um, been training hard with Joe Gallagher for like a year now. And yeah, I would like to thank Turkey Alishek for this opportunity as well. As you, are there any nerves seeping in? Again, this is a massive card, right? I mean, you are going to be opening the card as well. You are a local. When we get back to Saudi Arabia, are there any nerves there? Well, yeah, but I'll be, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. I'm sure if Joe's training you, you will be. Let's speak to your opponent, Jesus Gonzalez, via translator as well. Jesus, what an opportunity. I mean, these fight cards are the biggest fight cards of the year. You are going to be opening this fight card. I'm guessing you are going to come to try and cause the upset. Bueno, primero que todo, mi Dios me los bendiga a todos los presentes. También quiero dar gracias a los promotores por hacer esto posible y tenerme en cuenta en su, en su cartelera, que para mí, y yo sé que para muchas personas, es uno de los eventos más importantes de la historia de, en el boxeo. Eh, cabe mencionar que estoy muy, muy feliz también por Arabia, por abrirme las puertas, y claro, está mi oponente también... Por, por aceptar la pelea conmigo, nada pues, eh, con un gran honor, feliz me siento y pues a darla toda, a darla toda y agradecido vuelvo y digo. So basically he's uh, saying God bless you all, he's a very religious guy, so God bless you all. He wants to really thank the promoters, all of them, he really wants to thank Arabia Saudi as well to give him this opportunity, it's one of the best events in, in, in history of boxing, and he wants to thank his opponent team as well for picking him up to fight. It's a great honor, uh, he's over the moon, and of course, he's gonna be at the top of his game. He's gonna try to be the surprise of the event. Thank you very much, Jesus Mohamed Alakal versus Jesus Gonzalez will open the card October 12th. Many have asked uh, about a female fight on Riyadh season card. I've spoken to His Excellency Turkey about this so many times, and he said, we're waiting for the female fight, and I think we have one now. Sky Nicholson, unbeaten, the current WBC featherweight champion, Raven Chapman, unbeaten, WBC international champion. It's only right that they meet to open Riyadh season for females to fight there. Sky, I want to start with you first, the champion. You've got a smile on your face already. Mm -hmm. You've been waiting for this opportunity. You've called out Amanda Serrano for ages. It's not Amanda, but it's a tough one in Raven Chapman. How excited are you to be fighting on a Riyadh season card? I'm very excited. Obviously, I'd like to thank His Excellency for the opportunity. I think this is a better fight than me versus Serrano anyway. I have a lot of respect for Raven. I think we're gonna be a, a great clash of styles. 
and um, I'm just very, very honoured for the opportunity. In terms of sort of matchups, you're always confident you, when you go into your fights. You've barely been hit <laughs> in any of your fights. Are you expecting a lot more from this, given Ravens, given our CV? Yeah, I've been prepared for anything and everything on the night. Um, I've levelled up again this camp, and whatever Raven brings, we, we've got an answer for it. Raven, to you, what was it like when you got that phone call? Um, it's a big phone call to pick up as well. One of the ones you don't want to miss, but you did answer it. You're here now. Excitement? Yeah, massively. Um, you know, just want to thank everyone involved to, to have made the fight happen. You know, Turkey Al Sheik, Frank, Eddie. If it wasn't for them, this fight wouldn't be happening and women's boxing wouldn't be on Riyadh season yet. And, and like, like Sky says, I think this is a great first fight for the women's fight to be on there. Great clash of styles. And I'm just really looking forward to, to getting women on that big stage and putting on a performance. I was going to say that the importance of it, obviously, look, it's a world title fight and that's first and foremost, but the fact that you're going to be the first women's fight on a Riyadh season card, I mean, your name's forever going to be etched in history for doing that. That must mean so much to you. Yeah, it's huge. You know, I was just talking about before, there, there's not a lot of things now to, to make history and to still be able to be part of something to go down in the history books is, is really humbling and a massive part of why, why I do this as a fighter as well, as a woman in boxing, and just hopefully make it clear that it doesn't matter what gender you are, man, woman, you should get the opportunities that you deserve. I know your journey to this point, so congratulations as well. I think it's a fantastic opportunity Thank for you. both of you. Sky Nicholson versus Thank Raven you. Chapman. Ben Whitaker versus Liam Cameron is on this card. And I've been begging for Ben to get on one of these Riyadh season Saudi cards for so long because I think he's a superstar already in and out of the ring. Uh, but against Liam Cameron, it's not going to be easy. Liam Cameron coming off a, a close fight against Lyndon Arthur for the IBO light heavyweight strap. Liam, what a fantastic opportunity for you. Um, ben has made it look relatively easy so far. I don't think it's going to be easy October 12th. Well, it's up to him, isn't it? Um, I don't know how he's gonna, if he's going to box or he's going to fight with me, but um, it's going to be a good fight. I'll drag a fight out of him. Are you expecting that type of fight? Ben, again, so far, not one, no one's been able to really drag a fight out of you, right? You've done what you wanted to do in that ring. Uh, some people like it, some don't. I absolutely love it. What can we expect October 12th, Ben? Uh, I'm not really concerned what he brings. I'm more concerned about the DJ because I don't know what music he was playing when I was walking up here, so... Let's make sure he sorts that out for Saudi. Any pressure on you? Again, a lot of people have been calling for you to be on these big cars. Obviously, look, you've been on big cars with Boxer, but this is something slightly different, right? Any pressure on you to perform? I truly believe uh, this is the stage I was meant to be on. And uh, come October 12th, you'll see why I'm so, so special. Liam, final one from you. Um, you would have watched these fights, all of them. Your team would have studied these fights as well. Why are you so sure and confident you can beat Ben Whitaker? I've watched two of his fights and um, I know he won with a silver in the Olympics and me and my girlfriend were watching it. We were, we were laughing, not at him, but like, because it's, it's funny how he makes his opponents miss. So we were like laughing, but it's, he's not going to be able to do that. Um, you have to put your hands up in boxing. So far, his hands have been down and they've been successful, so it should be a good one. Ben Whitaker versus Liam Cameron. I do believe Ben will be pushed more than he's been pushed in previous fights. All right, I think the best cruiserweight in the world, um, Jai Pattaya, um, will take on Jack Massey. Jai, first of all, thank you for making it here, Jai. I know you had a bit of an issue in getting here, but you are here. Jai, you're so far so good on, on Riyadh season cards, right? Ellis Zorro, you got pushed against Marius Bradis. We know you wanted the Chris Billum Smith fight. You don't get that, you get Jack Massey who himself's coming off a really good win against Isaac Chamberlain. Is that a disappointment you didn't get Chris Billman smith or are you excited to be taking on Jack Massey? Uh, man, you know, it, it is what it is. Jack Massey has my full focus now. Um, we're locked in on him. You know, I was chasing those unification fights, but unfortunately we didn't get one. So it is what it is, man. 12th of October, we do it again. Jack, a few were offered. Um, a few, for whatever reason, couldn't take the fight, turned it down, dates didn't match up. You put your hand up and said, we'll take this fight. Again, you're coming off, I think, a fantastic win against Isaac Chamberlain. Why were you so ready to take this one against Jar Pattaya? Listen, this is what I do. This is my job. We're, we're fighters at the end of the day. And you, you get an opportunity this big. You take it with both hands. And I know how big this opportunity is. I'm going to take it with both hands. And I'm more than ready for the, uh, for the 12th. So, good to go. 
but I appreciate it. Thank, thank everyone what's made it happen. Turk, Ellishate, Ben, Spence, Kevin, the trainer Joe, so thank you very much. Many in the trade are already looking at unification fights for Jaya Pattaya, right? They're talking undisputed, potentially going to bridge or even heavyweight. You've been underdog in a few fights and you've overcome that and you've upset the apple cart before. Are you expecting to do exactly the same October 12th? Yeah, definitely. Listen, I know it's a, I've got a tough fight ahead of me, um, but I, I don't just turn up. I don't turn up for the money. I never do. I never did against Parker, and that wasn't my weight class. So, like I said, I know I've got an opportunity here. It's a lottery ticket. I'm going to take it with both hands and do anything I can in my world to win this fight. Jai um, against Marius Bradis it almost looked like a perfect Jai Patai fight for 11 rounds. The 12th round got difficult. Is there something to prove? against Jack Massey that you can separate yourselves from everyone else in this division? Um, we take a look from fights like that, you know, being in the ring with a, a great fighter like um, Maris Bradis. But, um, man, I'm not taking, you know, uh, Macy lightly. You know, I know he's coming to fight. This is his opportunity to become a world champion. And I've trained for 12 rounds of war, like I always do. So I'm prepared. Let's go. Jar Pattaya versus Jack Massey for the IBF Cruiserweight title should be a fantastic fight. Chris Eubank Jr. is back. He takes on Camille Zaramata. We haven't seen Chris Eubank Jr. since I thought he put in a career best performance against Liam Smith. He's the only man I know that's been called out by everyone from 147 to 168 pounds. Chris, you're back. And it's good to see you back as well. New promotional team, new trainer for this camp as well. On the promotional team, you've chosen boxer. Why? Um, why boxer? Because every other promoter out here is a scumbag. That's why. You know, you've got uh, Frank Warren behind me, been lying and cheating his way through boxing for the last couple decades. Wow. Sued me for a couple hundred thousand a few years ago, so obviously I was never going to go with him. Um, you know, the guy's a scumbag. Uh, Calais Sauerland. You know, he had me locked up. Speak in a, up, I can't hear you. you Ali Sauerland had, a, you know, had me locked up in a terrible contract for the last few years, squeezing money out of me at every opportunity. Um, <laughs> scumbag. Uh, Eddie Hearn, Frank Smith, you know, they did everything they could to try and make uh, this fight against Conor Ben still go ahead. Scumbag. Still go ahead. Why don't you fight Hamza Sharad scumbag? After knowing that they, uh, you know, that he was on steroids. Um, scumbags, you know. I would say the only, why don't you ask I would why say the only promoter that I know for sure isn't a scumbag is His Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh. You know, this is a man who isn't trying to take money from fighters. Uh, he isn't trying to use lawyers and accountants to, uh, lock fighters up in slave contracts. Um, you know, he's a man of God, he's a man of religion. That's what's most important to the people of Saudi Arabia. He just wants to put the biggest fights on, the best events on, and, uh, and pay fighters what they're worth. And as a fighter, um, you know, it's a blessing to be a fighter at this moment of time, because this is the first time we've ever had a promoter like this in the history of boxing. Um, Oh, and, you know, Ben Shalom's a very cool guy, too. Welcome back, Chris. Harmony in the room, as, as expected. On your opponent choice, Chris, uh, Camille Zaramata, I mentioned at the top, you've had fighters from 147 to 168 to call you out, right? Some big names. Uh, why Camille? Because I've been off a year, and this is a solid opponent, 25 and 2. He's only lost to two world champions. It's the perfect fight for me to get back into the ring after a year layoff, build a relationship with Saudi, get out there, get the ring rust off, and then go and knock off all these big names and world titles over the next 12 months. Uh, Camille, I'll, I'll come to you. Um, a couple of big fights that you've been in in recent years, Gennady Golovkin, Jaime Mingira as well. Chris Eubank Jr. represents another big fight. Those two previous ones you lost, what will be different October 12th? Witam wszystkich. Po pierwsze chciałbym bardzo podziękować wszystkim organizatorom, którzy przyczynili się do tego, że mogę tu wystąpić. 
Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank to the uh, promoters, to the organizers. Bardzo cieszę się z tej walki. Na pewno będę chciał wykorzystać, aczkolwiek walkę z Chrisem stawiam na najważniejszą walkę w mojej karierze. I'm really happy I'm here. I can tell you that this fight with Chris will be the most important in my career. We all saw Chris against Liam Smith in his first fight have some troubles. Have you taken any comfort from that, knowing that he can be hurt? We saw him get knocked down and knocked out. Have you taken any comfort from that? I didn't get knocked out. I was on my feet and the fight got stopped by the referee. Get your facts straight, please. Apologies, he's on his feet and the fight got stopped by the referee. Właśnie po to ciężko trenuje, tak, żeby móc wykorzystać tutaj słabości Chris'a, wejść do ringu, dać siebie wszystko i wygrać tę walkę. Uh, that's why I train hard to, uh, to find some uh, maybe weakness or, or weak sides, and, but uh, I promise I'm gonna give my best. Yeah, I expect this to be an exciting fight. As I said, it's great to see Chris Eubank Jr. back. Chris Eubank Jr. versus Camille Zaramata. Our co-main event is, I think, a very special one in the heavyweight division. The British heavyweight scene, as we know right now, is one of the best scenes in world boxing. And I think we have two guys here that are very, very close to mixing it with a very elite in the division. Their first fight, I think, could be potentially fight of the year. And they go again. Um, I think it isn't round one. I think it's a continuation of the first fight. So I think it's round 13. Fabio Wardley versus Fraser Clark. Um, both of you have watched this fight now, I'm guessing, so many times. Are we okay in saying that this fight was a draw? I'll start with you, Fabio. Well, it depends who you ask, really, but no, I don't think it was a draw at all. I think I pressed the fight, I pressed the action. Um, I had him going in the fight numerous times. I had him down, got a point deduction. I think there's many a point there that prove that I won the fight, but set up for a bigger rematch, so there's not too much to complain about. We get to come back to uh, well, at least I do. I get to come back to Riyadh, do it on a massive show, on a massive card, and, and finally settle the score properly. Was there any hesitation in taking the fight? Not because Zero. you didn't want to fight Fraser, but maybe for other opportunities? No, look, I'm in a fortunate position. I'm, I've got four belts at the moment. I'm, I'm ranked in the top 10 with, mo with multiple governing bodies. So I have options, but... Look, there was, there was some unfinished business there. There were some bits to settle. I'm not the type of person to leave things to lie. I want, I want it finished off. I want it done. I want that chapter ticked off to move forward. So, yeah, look, whilst we played around with a few other options, realistically, the only, other, the only real thing was to, was to finish off Fraser. Fraser, uh, I, I feel like I know exactly what you're going to say if I ask you, did you win the fight or was it a draw? You're going to say you won the fight, so we're going to skip that one. Very quickly, how much did you want this rematch, Fraser? It seemed like you were calling it from the very beginning. Yeah, before before I got back to the changing rooms, this is the fight that I wanted. You know, um, draws don't sit well with me. You could see I was devastated at the end of the fight. And I'm glad we got it on because, quite frankly, you know, I've had a lot of good things to say about Fabio since that fight. But now we're here and now I've seen him. I just can't wait to smash him in the face again. So I'm glad it's here. Do you feel like it was a fight of two halves? Maybe Fabio started very strongly, you started slowly, but then you maybe got your momentum the second half. Do you feel like you might need to start faster this time round? No, we have a game plan, of course we do. Um, but listen, I'm a reactive fighter. I'll go in there and do what I need to do. Again, a really good fight, um, great entertainment for everyone else. But I look back at that just and just see mistake after mistake, which I made. Um, obviously, I've gone to the gym. And um, I've done my best, you know, I've put the work in really, really, really put it on myself to iron out them creases and, and right them wrongs. Um, you know, I'm, I'm taking a lot from these guys that um, are on top of the bill, you know. They are real idols of, my, idols of mine, so I'm just looking at them and the way they box and mistakes can't be made. You know, when the stakes are high, it's all about who can hold it together and cut their mistakes out. Fabio, you fought on the first real season card uh, in Ghana versus Fury. You fought David Adelaide, and it was a really incredible performance, maybe a career best performance. It's happy hunting ground for you, isn't it, going back there? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a good place for me. Oh, good memories. I've had some good times there. So 
I thank you to His Excellency, obviously, for having me on the card again. And, and thank you to Uncle Frank as well for sticking me on the card because we know that Riyadh is a, is a good place for me. It was a fantastic win for me last time I was there. So I'm looking to put on a clean clinical knockout performance again this time around. Fantastic. Again, I think an incredible co-main event, British heavyweight title alongside, as you can see there, the Commonwealth heavyweight title, Fraser Clark versus Fabio Wardley. Our, our main event, the one that a lot of people are very, very excited about and understandably so. Again, it is for the undisputed title as the number one light heavyweight, not just, again, I'll repeat myself, not just of this era. I think arguably one of the number one light heavyweights of all time, Dimitri Bivol versus Artur Bertabiev. I do want to bring in Vadim Kornilov, part of Dimitri Bivol's team, manages Dimitri Bivol, manages so many good fighters. But Vadim, he's the crown uh, jewel in your stable. Uh, talk to me about Dimitri Bivol, just how special a fighter he is. Thank you. Uh, Dmitry obviously has proved a lot already in his career, and uh, I think everybody knows why, why he's special and uh, what makes him special. Uh, but I just want to say, um, and I'll probably repeat myself, but I want to say uh, uh, how much we appreciate uh, all of Riyadh and uh, uh, His Excellency Turkey Al El Sheikh, because at the end of the day, we always said that this fight would happen, but we never knew how and uh, in what uh, you know, what, what type of a fight it would be, what level of a show it would be. And now we see that this fight is getting the attention and the, um, the, the type of uh, hype that it deserves. Because like Eddie and everybody mentioned, it's uh, probably one of the most competitive fights in the sport. And um, it, it's probably one of the biggest fights we're going to see this year. Um, and I just want to say that uh, we're looking forward to October 12th. We appreciate, we appreciate very much everything that's been done bringing up to this fight because for us it's kind of been um, a build up to the fight. Um, I want to say thank you to Eddie, Frank Smith, all of Matchroom, um, Andre Rubinsky from World of Boxing who's been with us from the beginning, uh, Queensberry, The Zone, um, Spencer and everybody involved and uh, uh, definitely appreciate uh, Top Rank and uh, Arthur Betterbeef and we look forward to a big event. Dimitri has had uh, an amazing camp. Hopefully everything, everything goes well uh, towards October 12th and we look forward to, to this fight. Thank you very much, Avedim. Before we speak to uh, Dimitri Bivol, Todd, I want to get a word. Obviously, Arto is your charge and has been from the get-go. Um, look, highly ranked by everyone when it comes to pound-for-pound -pound rankings. I don't see his name worse than number five. A very, very special fighter. 20 wins, 20 fights, 20 knockouts, an incredible record. Um, just how special is Arto Baturbia? You know, uh, when we, come, when we come into the fight game, the one thing we really like is we like that absolute determination when somebody goes for the absolute destruction. And every time Arthur gets in the ring, he just goes to terminate. And when I first met him in Canada, I was scared out of my mind sitting at a table. Frank and I are right now just shaking in our boots right now because the guy is an absolute animal. You just feel it. And last press conference, he says, I don't say much. I say well, two words. He knows. That's all he said. So for the lack of speaking that he gives, he puts on an incredible performance. And I think we're all in for a special treat with two guys in their prime meeting each other at the great weight class. So Arthur is going to put on an incredible performance, and we're going for 21, my boy. Certainly are. Let's welcome in um, the current WBA and IBO champion, unbeaten Dimitri Bivol. Uh, Dimitri, it's been an incredible journey so far. Um, topped off, I think, by that Canelo victory in Las Vegas. He then followed up with the Zerdo Ramirez performance as well. Two very, very good fighters. Canelo at the time, arguably, maybe pound for pound, number one. But this is the fight you've been wanting and asking for for a few years now. Was it just because it was undisputed or was it you wanted to fight Baturbiev? Uh, first of all, hello, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, I wanted the undisputed fight first. And uh, I wanted to fight against the best uh, boxers in light heavyweight divisions. This is, was to my goals to make my name in this uh, sport. And uh, he has these belts, and uh, I'm so appreciate to Saudi 
to his excellency that he made this fight he's making this fight happen i i'm so appreciate to my team uh, vadim kornilov to my promoters uh, eddie hearn uh, frank smith uh, andrei rebinski everyone was uh, wanted to make this fight also and of course to arthur bitterby thank you uh, for making this fight uh, also and uh, this is my goal when i came to pro boxing of course uh, i put uh, my target that I need to be the best in uh, in where what where I'm doing uh, in light heavyweight division. I have to be the best, and this is the final final fight for to prove myself. What would it mean to become undisputed? It isn't just the belts that we see now; it's the Ring Magazine title as well. It's every single belt in boxing. What would it mean come October 12th? around midnight for you to have all those belts around your waist, carrying them all around your arms? Uh, what it means for me, I'm in boxing since six uh, years old. Uh, all my journey, uh, I was uh, working hard. I sacrificed a lot. And uh, this is like final step. Did I do everything right or not? And uh, I want to make it like I did everything right. So far, so good, as is so far, so good as well for Artur Baturbiev. Uh, Artur, incredible record, right? No world champion has your record. You've knocked out everyone or stopped everyone that you fought. You're expected to do the same by many in your team as well. But talk to me about becoming undisputed and what it would mean for you. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank you uh, for uh, season Ariad for excellency to make it happen from this fight for uh, my company top rank Queensberry for my opponent company my opponent for everyone uh, it's mean like you know when you um, it's top of uh, meaning in professional boxing when you have uh, four belts you know <laughs> and that's it I want to win another fourth one does it matter that the opponent is Dimitri Bivol? Could it have been anyone here? Or does it mean something extra special that it is someone that you've known for so many years in Dimitri Bivol? Can you repeat that? I didn't. I mean, does it matter that the opponent is Dimitri? Or does it mean something special that it is Dimitri because you've known Dimitri for so long? Uh, if I understand, because I hear not very well here. Um, if I understand, uh, every opponent is different. I think so. It's like... Every uh, person is different. That's why he's, he is too. But we have uh, we prepared for for this fight some different scenarios, you know, to be ready for for everything. I have to ask. It'd be remiss of me if I didn't ask about the injury. It, it was. It seemed from the outside to be a big injury. Fully recovered. We are going to see a 100% Arto Baturbi of no excuses. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, I did, I always do preparation for 100%. If I'm not there, I don't want to do like, I mean, for half is, is not for me. Okay, I, I know you're a man of very few words, so I, I will ask you for a prediction. I mean, again, so far, no one has gone the distance with you. Do you expect to go the distance October 12th? I never did prediction, but... Uh, you know, and I never uh, want to knock him out someone, you know. It's happened, happened like uh, I always uh, more focus for different details, you know, like to prepare, to to do good things. It's mean for me, good things. And again, for both of you, so far, so good. Two unbeaten fighters. This is what we want, right? The best meet and the best undisputed, everything on the line. And it will be on the line, not just for these fighters, for everyone on this card as well. Before the fighters do a face-off, and I'm really intrigued about some of these face-off, we have a trailer to show you. Everyone's excited about the trailers. I am as well. I've not yet seen this one, but I've been told it is incredible. Here's the trailer for Dimitri Bivol versus Artur Bivol.